This is the second in a series of short casts designed for the families of children with chromosome 18 abnormalities. In this podcast, we will address why and how this happened to me and my child. Among the top questions that parents have are, how common are chromosome abnormalities? Why did this happen to me? When did this happen? And did I do something that caused this? The fact of the matter is that chromosome abnormalities occur very commonly. Chromosome rearrangements, deletions, and or duplications can happen during cell division when chromosomes replicate and then segregate into two daughter cells. Additionally, the separation of chromosomes into two daughter cells can have errors in which one cell gets one too many chromosomes, leaving the other cell with too few chromosomes. These errors are believed to happen during the formation of the sperm or egg cells before conception or very soon after fertilization. These types of errors are believed to occur in 50% of conceptions. However, when these errors happen, 50% of the time the resulting embryo fails to implant in the uterus, too early to even become a recognized pregnancy. Of those abnormal embryos that do implant, 90% of those embryos are miscarried, usually in the first trimester. So, if you do the math, 50% of conceptions have chromosome abnormalities, but 90% of those do not implant. That leaves 5% of conceptions with chromosome abnormalities surviving long enough to become a recognized pregnancy. But if 90% of those are miscarried, that leaves a half of 1% of conceptions having chromosome abnormalities that are survivable to birth. This is the same as one out of every 200 babies having a chromosome abnormality. These data are derived from what is known about in vitro fertilization. The actual incidence when studying live-born babies is slightly higher. One in every 180 babies has a chromosome abnormality. In a population of individuals with intellectual disability, 50% of them have chromosome abnormalities. The caveat to these data are that these numbers were derived before the use of high-resolution molecular analysis techniques that we will describe in upcoming podcasts. Therefore, our prediction would be that using newer tools, chromosome abnormalities will be found to be even more common because now we can detect even smaller abnormalities that were undetectable before. Therefore, we would predict that chromosome abnormalities will be found to be the cause of an even higher percentage of the cases of intellectual and developmental disability. But there will be many individuals with chromosome abnormalities who have no manifestation as a consequence. We will also talk more about that in a later podcast. This pie chart illustrates the proportions of the different chromosome abnormalities. Down syndrome is by far the most common, with trisomy 18 and 13 a distant second and third. All the other possible combinations that you were asked to imagine in the previous podcast make up about 54% of all chromosome abnormalities. Individually, these conditions are rare, some being unique to a single person. But collectively, this represents a large number of people. By now, you may appreciate that chromosome abnormalities happen as a part of life in cell division, a process that does not always occur perfectly. But the questions remain, did you do anything or were you exposed to anything that increased your chances of this happening to you? The answer is probably not. There are no data to suggest that any environmental exposures before or during pregnancy can actually increase your chances of having a child with a chromosome abnormality. It is known that older mothers are at an increased risk for having a child with an extra chromosome, such as Down syndrome. It is also known that older fathers are at risk for having a child with a new mutation, but not necessarily a chromosome abnormality. One might think that the survivors of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb and their descendants might have had more children with chromosome abnormalities due to increased radiation exposure, but they have not. So this leads us to the conclusion that for parents who themselves have normal chromosomes, there was no way to prevent having a child with a chromosome abnormality other than to not have children. So to summarize what we've learned so far, Chromosome abnormalities occur in one out of every 180 live births. They happen to everyone, it's just that most are not compatible with life. 
The chromosome abnormality occurred in the germ cells probably before conception or very early after fertilization. There are currently no data that would suggest it could have been prevented in parents with normal chromosomes.